I walked from Bay Path to the CVS down on the street. I purchased bleach and aspirin. And in my backpack, I had the seven psychiatric meds that I was prescribed at the time but hadn't been taken. I walked into the park and I crawled into the brook that runs through the forest here. And I laid in the water, smoking cigarettes, contemplating on if I was really going to do this. So my name is Alexandra Perkins and I live in Longmeadow, Mass. I'm a student at Bay Path University and I am also a survivor of suicide. When I was three years old, my parents got divorced and I lived with my father who serves in the military. My mother left my life and never really came back until I was 17 and that's when I chose to have a relationship with her but growing up I never had her in my life I didn't really have my father my father was always deployed I lived with my stepmother whom I love and appreciate very much but being so far from my family not having my mom not having my dad definitely created issues for me growing up I remember always feeling really isolated, really secluded. I was bullied in high school for having red hair. I always had trouble adjusting, moving around. I didn't move around that much, but when I did, I found it hard to make friends. And I always felt like something was missing from my life. My first attempt happened when I was a junior in high school. I never really got around to completing my plan because my parents found my note and I was hospitalized for the first time. Being hospitalized for your first time is one of the scariest situations you'll ever be in. You're confused, you don't know what's going on. I don't like to say that I'm not a rookie anymore, but I definitely and more familiar with the process, but being 16 and being locked in a psychiatric unit for adolescents, not knowing what's going on in your own head, let alone what's going around in your environment, it can be pretty stressful. And so that encouraged me to leave my parents when I was 17. I ran away from home to reconnect with my biological mother, whom I hadn't seen in 10 years. I moved to Corden, Indiana, where my mom was living with her now ex-husband. I started a new high school there. It was the beginning of my senior year. I really didn't know anybody. Uh, I didn't even really know my mom. I didn't know who I was. And it was just during that time trying to figure out who I was, what I wanted to do, if I wanted to go to college, where I wanted to go and my mother relapsed on illicit substances. My mother started abusing prescription opioids. She started using methamphetamine again and that this developed into a severe heroin addiction. And my mother was unable to take care of me towards the end of the first semester of my senior year. We lost the house and I was homeless. So my partner at the time agreed to help me and I moved away from my mom. I lost my mom again after meeting her for the first time in 10 years and that was heartbreaking. I had a really hard time adjusting to being in a new school. I moved to Groton, Connecticut where I ended up enrolling myself in high school and finishing with honors. I graduated and moved on to college, but that last stretch of my senior year of high school, I was constantly in and out of the hospital. 
I had chronic SI that was through the roof and there was nothing that I could really do to control it. Moving into college and finding myself in another situation where yet again I had to figure out who I was, what I was going to do with my life. I worked on joining more clubs. I played soccer for my college here in Longmeadow. I've been playing soccer since I was eight and it's a really good outlet for me whenever I feel like my symptoms are getting more severe. Um, but I stayed out of the hospital from August until April and that was one of the greatest feats I've ever managed because I had never gone that long without being in the hospital. And come April, my partner, whom I had previously been staying with, actually uh, cheated and left me for another woman. And the devastation of that heartbreak sort of set me up for my first very serious suicide attempt that occurred at the end of April. I impulsively got into another relationship and when it didn't go according to plan, I felt as though I had been abandoned by everybody. My mom had been detoxing at that time so I wasn't talking to her at the moment and I didn't know whether she was alive or dead. So I didn't feel like I had anybody in my life that cared. So I was broken with, up with at work and at seven o'clock that evening, I decided that I was going to take my life. I, I pretended to be okay. The thing with people who have chronic SI and then their SI gets to the point where they have a plan and intent, they hide their true intentions because they know that if they tell someone or they reach out that someone will stop them, and that's not the point of what's going on. So I didn't ask for help. I cried a little bit to let everybody know that I was hurting, but I told them I was gonna be okay when I wasn't. Um, I got off of work at 10 o'clock. I had my boss drive me home. My boss looked at me and he asked me if I was gonna be okay, and I lied. And I went into my room and I barricaded myself inside and I overdosed on my psychiatric medications that I hadn't been taking, that I had been hoarding. I drank um, some cleaning products and I passed out in a coma that I didn't wake up for three days. Before I overdosed, I barricaded myself in that room. I pushed the bed in front of the door. I locked myself inside. I tied the door to the bed so that no one could open it through a dresser in front. And I thought, this is it. No one's gonna find me. And if they do, it's gonna be too late. My roommate actually saved my life the next morning. She walked into the room and there was no barricade. There was nothing in front of the door. She walked in and she found me on the floor, barely breathing. She called campus public safety and they saved my life. They brought me to the hospital and I was in the ICU for a few days. I woke up and I was completely distraught. Waking up from a suicide attempt, those moments are the hardest that I've ever had to deal with because when you try and take your life, the heartbreak and pain doesn't go away if you don't succeed. If anything, it just gets worse and it's amplified. You feel even more hopeless, you feel even more alone. And now you've hurt people, you've hurt yourself, you've created situations that you have to deal with now, they're stressful. I had to get back into school I really didn't know what I was doing with myself, so I decided to go to a residential treatment program in Chicago, Illinois, and I stayed there for about a month. And while I was there, I discovered something about myself that I hadn't previously been aware of. 
My favorite form of therapy is art therapy, and it drives my passion for psychology. I want to be an art therapist so I can help people who struggle with issues like I have to help them realize that there are other outlets to be able to channel those emotions. Uh, you're given a blank canvas, you can put anything on it. There's no judgment. Everybody is an artist. There is no such thing as bad art. And the whole purpose of art is to discover more about yourself. But I wasn't done figuring out who I was or what I wanted to do when I left Timberline Knowles. I got back into school and I came back to Bay Path and I started studying psychology again. Except I was still struggling because I hadn't come to terms with the issues that I had been harboring for years. The fact that I have severe abandonment problems from not having my mom in my life. And I was doing nothing to mend my relationship with her. I wasn't going to therapy consistently. I wasn't taking my medication. I was just putting it all aside, suppressing it, trying to make it through the day, make it through the night, taking it day by day, but eventually that wears on you. And I got into another relationship in October. Um, that relationship didn't work out. And on October 5th, I lost the person that I had been channeling all of my emotions into. I told them that I was going to take my life in Laurel Park and proceeded to turn off all communications. I didn't tell anybody what I was doing. Within 30 minutes, I had everything planned and it was an extremely impulsive decision that left me battling for my life for months. I walked from Bay Path to the CVS down on the street. I purchased bleach and aspirin and in my backpack I had the seven psychiatric meds that I was prescribed at the time but hadn't been taken. I walked into the park and I crawled into the brook that runs through the forest here. And I laid in the water and I decided, after sitting there contemplating on my life, that I was going to end it. And I laid in that brook running through the park so that if they tried to find me, they couldn't. And I drank the bleach, I took the pills, and I passed out. And. I wasn't awake for when they were searching for me. The state troopers, Longmeadow Police Department, Enfield all conducted a missing person search for me after I had been missing for two days. They interviewed my best friends, they interviewed my partner at the time that I had just ended the relationship with. I had told my partner that I was going into the forest and that I was going to take my life. He did not report anything to, to anybody. And after they interviewed him in the investigation, they came to the park and they used dogs, they used a bloodhound and a cadaver dog to try and find me, locate me in the park, but because I had crawled into the brook to avoid having a dog find me, the dogs were unable to locate me. So I had volunteers and the police department line up and walk the park. and. On the far left side of the search team, someone was standing 20 feet away from me and they almost didn't see me. I was hidden, I crawled inside of a bush. So they just barely caught a glimpse of my red hair. And immediately they pulled me from the brook. They put me on a stretcher and they took me to the hospital. 
I didn't wake up for 10 days. And when I did, it was the most painful experience of my life. I woke up in the hospital with my parents beside me. I was intubated. I had a breathing tube. I hadn't eaten. My whole body was swollen. I couldn't walk. I couldn't even use the bathroom. And being 19 years old at the time and not being able to do the simple things in life that I had taken for granted really humbled me and put me in a perspective that I really could have not made it. And I'm very grateful that I did. Hypothermia saved my life. The weather at that time was about 45 degrees, but because I was laying in water, my internal organs shut down when I attempted to take the prescription medication. And because my organs weren't metabolizing the toxins, my body was just kind of stuck slowly processing the medication, but not fully absorbing everything into my blood. So when I got to the hospital, my body started warming up and that's when the medicine started kicking in. And I was in the ICU for 10 days. I had three dialysis sessions, and even after the three dialysis sessions, my kidneys were stage four kidney failure for two, three weeks. Um, I had to lay in a hospital bed and basically eat what I could, drink what I could, while I waited for my kidneys to see if they were even gonna be able to function normally. It almost came to the point where at 19 years old, I was going to have to have dialysis for the rest of my life as a result of trying to take it. I'm very fortunate that I didn't pass away. I'm very fortunate that my body has recovered as well as it has. I have no remaining physiological issues from my attempt. My body is left a little scarred but I'm choosing to view this experience as something to learn from. The fact that I can be very impulsive and I need to watch my behavior. I need to focus on the things that I love in life, the people I love, the people who care about me. And I want to stop other people from getting to the point where I was at. I'm choosing to study art therapy, to work on developing activities for individuals who are struggling, whether this be in a psychiatric setting or even a criminal justice setting. I want to work on helping them develop their creative process on a blank canvas without judgment. I had a hard time looking at a blank canvas and not feeling the anxiety of having to fill up the empty space or not being good enough, not making something beautiful. And I had to work through knowing that there, it's my canvas. This is my life. The canvas is my life and I can paint it however I want. It doesn't have to be unfinished. It doesn't have to end. I can completely paint it over in white if I want and start over. I can change the tones. I can add a whole different color. It really, it doesn't matter because no one else is painting it but me. And I want people to realize that. that you should never take a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And if I could go back, and I could look at me when I was in October. I would take her and I would just give her a hug and tell her that I love her and that it's gonna be okay. And it has been.